People are our most important resource. Cliché? Well, I seem to think it is. Why is it that 70% of the workforce is disengaged? Look at Gallup, you'll learn that, you'll see that. There's a disconnect, isn't there? May 1st, 2011. Two Black Hawk helicopters take off from a remote location. On a moonlit night, they hug the rugged mountains and go undetected. At their final checkpoint, they commit to the raid. Upon arrival at the compound, the first helicopter crashes. Who knows what I'm talking about? Everybody knows, the Bin Laden raid. Right. Now most of you are aware that 24 SEALs participated in that raid. But what if I told you there were 79 people involved and a dog? Forget about the dog. Who are the other 55? How do people from three different cultures unite for such a complex operation? Now here's what you don't know. They flew for 90 minutes. They loitered while these SEALs did the raid for 38 minutes, and then they flew on the egress for another 90 minutes. That's more than three and a half hours of flight time. But a Blackhawk only carries two and a half hours worth of fuel. How did these guys get gas in the middle of nowhere? These poor guys who operate in our worst conditions. Unsung heroes. We all have them, right? Some of the key takeaways for me was when he spoke about the fact that leaders aren't afraid to ask for help. Um, if there's a situation where you're leading your team, there's nothing wrong with if you reach out for help from other people. So what frustrates you more than anything? I asked that question at a conference in Dubai, and William here says, with some exasperation, I just want my people to do their jobs. I feel like I have to do their work for them. I want my life to be easier. I said to William, why are you doing their jobs? If you want your life back, you have to learn to delegate. The late Maya Angelou. I've learned that people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did. But people will never forget how you made them feel. A new commander arrives. In our very first meeting, Tom, I'm aware of your reasons, but I'm canceling your vacation request. It's too close to our annual evaluation. When I leave Major Christick's office, remember that name? I'm furious. How am I supposed to tell my sister that I can no longer be in her wedding party. What do managers want most? They want their leaders to be responsible. What do you think employees want most? They want you to give responsibility. Now, my two predecessors handled the flight schedule personally. I decided to delegate this task to Tom Sylvia, a very capable warrant officer. Now when I return, I notice a difference in attitude. Not in Tom. Where do you think I notice it most? Who said that? Say it again. Yourself. Say it so you can hear it. <laughs> Yourself. There you go. And me! And me, you know that great feeling you get when you give someone a gift and they really appreciate it? I didn't need to run the flight schedule. But delegating that task to Tom gave him the opportunity to shine. That event shaped how I would lead for the rest of my career. I want you to make a V-shaped window. Come on now. Work with me. All right. Now, I'm looking out there. None of you, no yous out there. None of this soft, curvy stuff. I'm an army guy. Hard, straight lines. 12 o'clock. What do you see? Shift your window to 11, 
and then the one. Everything changed, didn't it? An entirely different picture. Let's try it again. 12 o'clock. Tilt your head to the left. Tilt your head to the right. Once again, everything changed. So as a leader, you have to consider other people's perspectives. As a leader, you may need to reconsider your perspective. When I had my first command as a young captain, I trained for triathlons twice a day. And as a lieutenant colonel, my second command, I was able to get a second master's degree. Now, how did I do that? Because I learned to delegate. So William here, after three days, finally smiled.